a good hour or more before kickoff, television screens played footage of the 1968 European Cup final above posters of some of Manchester United's current players drinking from cups emblazoned with the name of the team's official coffee pardon. The stadium concourses around the Old Trafford ground, which Sir Bobby Charlton graced for so many years, following a May night at Wembley when Charlton scored the first and the last goal in United's 4-1 victory over Benfica, possibly his finest hour groups of fans, some of whom had placed wreaths at the base of the statue of Charlton, George Best, and Dennis Law on the stadium forecourt, stood motionless. Everything was perfectly visible, even the way Brian Kidd's straightforward square pass slipped a bit on the uneven ground before it got to Charlton, who took advantage of the bounce to clip it past the diving Benfica goalie and raise it over his head. The winner was united thanks to that goal, and the camera focused on Charlton for a long time after the final whistle ran. After lowering his head momentarily, Charlton raised his gaze to confirm that he had connected with a Benfica player in a similar situation. Charlton was not constantly considering good sportsmanship, always considering how to do things correctly. He was always considering how to pay tribute to his buddies who had perished in the Munich flight catastrophe 10 years prior. The time of the FC Copenhagen match approach, the groups of supporters persisted anyway. The only visible remnants of the trauma that would follow Charlton for the rest of his life were images of him lying in a bed at wrecked Stary Saar Hospital in Munich, his head bandaged, a cut on his right cheek, and a graze on his left. A wreath had been placed in the seat where England's greatest player had watched his successors flit across the turf he had once bestrode when they ascended the steps from the concourses to look down on the grass, which looked so brilliantly green in the floodlight glare. This was noticed by those sitting in the Sir Bobby Charlton stand. A year or so after the Munich tragedy, journalists passed some comments inscribed on the wall by the renowned Manchester Evening News reporter David Meek as they made their way to the press box. Meek observed, Charlton has gained poise and confidence. Maybe it was the realization that he was now more than just a young player and that he bore a big part of the blame for United's comeback. Prior to kickoff, United manager Eric Ten Hag, 1968 goalkeeper Alex Stepney, and Dan Gore, captain of the United under-19 young team, marched to the center circle to lay another wreath. The piper led the group. It's rare that a United team has felt more like they are playing in the shadow of giants than on this occasion. If Charlton, who passed away on Saturday at the age of 86, was perhaps the greatest English football player of all time, then Ten Hag's United appear a world apart from a team that can follow in the footsteps of Sir Matt Busby's teams from the 1950s and 1960s and win the most coveted title in European football. This is a United club that has struggled this season. It is hesitant, shy, restless, confused, and disjointed. Going into the match against Copenhagen, the team knew that it needed to win badly after dropping its opening two group matches against Bayern Munich and Galatasaray. It was difficult not to question where the older hand that Meek had written about could be found in the present air. Is there a man who is willing to assume the task of leading United out of this wilderness, as Charlton did in even more dire circumstances decades ago? Regretfully, this United team shows very little indication of leadership. Nobody has the stature that Charlton once had, according to United. Perhaps one of these players will rise through these levels, but it was difficult to predict that. In fact, United appeared overawed by Charlton's homin. Copenhagen came close to taking the lead five minutes after the race began. Harry Maguire attempted a weak tackle, but Mohamed el beat him, sprinted down the right and crossed the ball deep to the back post, where Diogo Gon Calves received it with his right foot. The ball rebounded off the right-hand post as Gon Calves drove it towards goal, leaving Andre Onana stunned in the United goal. El Yanusi attempted to drive the loose ball home during a scramble, but it was diverted behind for a corner. At these times, United was anxious. When Copenhagen passed the ball through and around the home team, they appeared far more proficient and confident than the home squad, who appeared listless and uninspired. It was simple to understand why they had gained the lead against Galatasaray and Bayern in their prior meetings. After a frustratingly lackluster first half, United finally found their footing when Marcus Rashford curled a fantastic pass into Rasmus Hoyland.
The striker turned swiftly and blasted a venomous shot that was just too high, but it was all the home team could do. Five minutes after the half, Copenhagen again opened up the United defense, and Onana made a fantastic diving save to stop a shot from Lucas Lerid. A few minutes later, United managed to generate an opportunity of their own. But Christian Eriksen, the halftime substitute, was spectacularly stopped low to his right by Kamel Grabara. Alejandro Garnacho was set up nicely for a clear-through pass from Bruno Fernandes halfway through the half, but the substitute's initial touch led him down as he overran the ball. Nineteen minutes remained until United made the much-needed breakthrough. Magnuk, who has been on the outside of the team for most of his recent United career but is as near to a leader as the steam has had, fought his way in front of a defender and guided his header past Grabara after Eric Sun curled over a fantastic cross from the right. In the midst of extra time, Scott McTominay attempted to clear a high ball but instead connected with Elu Nusi, almost causing United to bloat. The stadium exploded in joy and relief when Jordan Larson took the penalty but Onana threw himself to his left to beat it away. Even though it was a slight and unimpressive victory, United did at least get their first points of the season in European competition. If Charlton had been seated in the chair in the director's box where the wreath was, he would have smiled. And that was sufficient on this night over all others.